This is a NeoPixel. There's uh, four semiconductors bonded together in a single component. Uh, there's a green LED, a red LED, and a blue LED, of course. Uh, but for the focus of this video, there's a controller chip, and uh, I'm going to take a look at it and see uh, what I can find out about its design. Okay, well here's the controller die looking straight down. It looks a little bit wavy because I'm photographing it through that clear material that was used to encapsulate uh, all the semiconductors. If we draw our attention to the lower left, we can see three identical structures, and that's the uh, outputs to the LEDs. Uh, then just to the uh, left of the uh, bond pads is the uh, FETs. Of course, you need some current carrying capability. And then just next to that would be the circuitry, I suspect, that's being used to uh, provide some current limiting. If you look above there, it looks like there might be actually a, a fourth pad, but there's, of course, no bond wire. Uh, and if you look closer, there's actually a divot on the bond pad, and that's an indication it was actually used during manufacturing tests. So I suspect that's a diagnostic uh, faculty of the uh, device. In the uh, middle, there, of course, is a ton of logic gates. Well, not a ton, actually. It's in small hundreds, actually. Uh, not a really complicated function, obviously no microprocessor or anything, it's just simply uh, implemented as a, an array of uh, logic gates. Uh, on the upper left there is uh, two analog structures, and to sort that down actually I need to uh, go back to the actual device to see if this uh, IC actually has its own self-clocking circuitry, so let's take a look at that. So what I have going on here is I uh, program the NeoPixels all to be uh, red, and then I have a solar cell which of course converts light to electricity. And I turn off all the lights in the workshop and I was able to capture this repeating pattern. Uh, it's doing probably pulse width modulation, has a frequency of 400 hertz. Now the question is, is that coming from the Arduino or is the NeoPixel self-timing? So I'll just pull out the uh, data lead for programming and I can see the NeoPixel are still maintaining the pattern that was programmed into them. So there's obviously some sort of uh, built-in uh, timing circuit on the actual die. Okay, so two analog blocks. Uh, one clearly has to be a clock, and I suspect it's the one on the right. Uh, I think it's a ring oscillator, and then the much larger structure the arrow is directly pointing to is a uh, larger bit of FET structures. You need some sort of um, power carrying capabilities, so you have to put down fairly large FETs. Uh, that would then mean to the left of that will have to be some form of analog power on reset control circuitry. Um, and that looks like a strong suggestion, because you can see some resistors that have been laid out on the polysilicon. And of course, uh, two voltage divider type structures, and then we a monitor. And then just below that is just a smattering of gates, which would be just about perfect for doing some sort of reset function. So uh, on the uh, right-hand side, there's a D in and D out. Uh, it's a daisy chain chip, basically. You drive a signal into it, and then it repeats it outwards, and that's how you can create these very long arrays. Uh, each pad uh, has a, a ESD protection structure onto it. Uh, what that is used for, of course, is to prevent the chip from being damaged if it's hit with a, a high ESD event. Now, this thing's all encapsulated inside the package, but if this die was bonded out separately, uh, those ESD diodes would certainly have a good use. So, there we go. That is the uh, NeoPixel and uh, what you can see from the controller die. So, as a further proof, it's pulse width modulation. What I have is the LED sort of counting up its intensity. Let me just put the uh, solar cell on top of it. And we come back to the oscilloscope and we see the classic pulse width modulation, basically low intensity with a small pulse, then it grows larger as it gets brighter, and then of course it resets back to zero, and then there's of course a frequency associated with that. 